Welcome back everyone, this is Eric and Barry from Moss Pond and Gun, and uh, today we got another one of our little versus videos for you. Uh, hopefully you guys have found these videos to be entertaining. Um, today we've actually gotten uh, quite a few questions from people about the differences between the kel and the Ruger. As you know, the uh, kel um, uh, P3AT and then the uh, kel PF9, also in Ruger you've got the LC9 and the LCP. Basically, the Ruger is pretty much a copy, you know, of that particular gun. So we're going to kind of compare and contrast the two guns, uh, show them side by side, and you can draw your own conclusions over which one is better. Um, Barry, what do you think about the kel -Tex? I mean, I know they've been around a while. Well, now, the kel have been out for about 20 years now, and they're very well proven guns. Uh, this particular example is not a 380. We don't have one. It's a 32. Now, it locks open on the last round. The 380 doesn't. But that gun uh, is a, a 32, and it's been a, that was the years ago. This was the smallest, lightest 32 ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's still one of the lightest, but of course, uh, Taurus has copied them, and uh, Ruger's copied it with the uh, LCP. Now the old Caltech here, these are very reliable. Yeah. Now you take the Ruger LCP. Uh, this gun right here is more ergonomic. It's smoother for your hand. Uh, the gun is overall smoother gun, but uh, this gun hasn't been out anywhere near as long as the kel -Tec. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much a copy of the kel -Tec. Right. Um, but uh, I've taken uh, people to the range with this gun, uh, doing gun classes and all, and this gun is superb. This gun has never failed. The kel is a very reliable gun, too. So don't let <laughs> that throw you off. But the, the kel has been around three times longer than this one, and this gun was recalled immediately when it hit the market. This was gun of the year. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but it was immediately recalled along with the SR9, and it was for trigger function or whatever like that. But these guns are, have proven to be very reliable. This is a great little gun. I bought my wife an LCP, and uh, she likes it quite a bit. Um, one thing that I can say on the kel -Tec, I mean, now granted, a 32 or a 380 is not exactly going to generate an amount of recoil that's going to be blistering by any means. However, um, the grip profile on the kel -Tec is pretty rough um, compared to the Ruger. Uh -huh. This gun just has a wonderful feel to it, and uh, I like the uh, manual slide lock, which is nice. And uh, really, just from a construction standpoint, I think that the Ruger is a higher quality gun. Um, pretty sure the injection molding uh, blocks that they use on the kel are probably getting worn out. I mean, even the one we're looking at here has definitely got some uh, ugly marks on it, that sort of thing. I guess um, where we can kind of draw our conclusion between these two particular guns is that if you're wanting, you know, pretty cosmetics and a, a better trigger and a little bit better features and everything, you could probably go with the Ruger. If you want something that's going to work good but it's just ugly, then go with the kel -Tec. I mean, that's pretty much the, the bottom line on those. Uh, the construction of the guns is very similar. Uh, you'll see in the uh, B-rolls here, they're, they're very similar guns. We're going to get uh, up-close shots of those for you so you can see what they're about. You can draw pretty much the same parallel between the PF9 and the LC9. Now this is one example where I think the kel actually feels a little bit better in my hand. Although they are very, very similar guns, I prefer the kel -Tec. Yeah, it's, a, it's an older design. And also, let me add, the kel you can get, a kel makes a belt clip that you can put on here like a pocket knife, and the women can put, clip that in their pocketbook, and every time they open it, they know where the gun is, and so on and so forth. This gun is also, uh, belt clip uh, compatible, the Rugers are, they don't make belt clips. And it's clips. got a rail system, I like and, that a lot. Right, it has a little rail system. Now there's a lot of little lasers now that are real short that you that will fit right on this gun. Uh, this gun comes in a two-tone, silver and gray, it comes in silver and black, and it comes in all black. It comes in silver and green. There's a lot of colors for this gun that you could get if we could get them. Well, they're sending them out uh, factory Cerakoted now. Several right. of them have Cerakote finishes now you can get. But everything from kel is very difficult to get. They're a small company. They work in a cycle. They might make this for a while, then they make this for a while, then they make the PMR 30 for a while. The uh, Sub 2000 carbine is a great gun, and they make that. You have to wait for the cycle to come around again. Yeah. But they're not, they're not able to keep up right now. That's the problem. But here's the Ruger LC9, which is a very nice little gun. Uh, it's like, again, it's more ergonomic. It's smoother. It is. For your hand, there's no sharp edges on this gun. This has proven to be a very good gun, too. 
Well, you know, despite, like you were mentioning about availability, I mean, you know, despite the uh, limited availability of the Keltex, I mean, we are able to keep them in stock. Um, you know, we have several of the Keltex in stock, uh -huh. the PF9, the LC9. So it's not like they're impossible to get or anything. I mean, we do have them. Um, the LC9 is a great gun. I'm not too crazy about the manual safety. I do like the sights better on the LC9. Uh, the manual um, slide hold open, slide lock is always a nice thing, which of course the uh, Keltec has that as well. Honestly, I have to say for just the overall feel of the gun and the profile, I think I prefer the Keltec. You got the rail system, you got the belt clip you can add, and uh, some some things just you know can't be done better. So uh, personally, I think the Keltec is definitely the way to go there. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn. I think on the 380, uh, the LCP is definitely a better gun, but on the 9mm, I think my money still has to go towards the uh, PF9. No. My wife actually owns one of the little LCPs, and uh, she shoots it quite regularly, and uh, it runs just fine. Now, that gun, all the time we've done videos with that or been out shooting with her, it's never malfunctioned, has it? No, it hasn't. No. We've never gun really gun. done... Well, actually, I take that back. I think we did do a formal review on the LCP. We did. So uh, we did. I'll post through some uh, content of that thing uh, shooting as, as time goes on. But, uh, yeah, we just wanted to kind of draw conclusions between the two guns. Um, I know that the, uh, the guns are both very popular, and there's a lot of them out there. And uh, hopefully this will give you some idea of what the guns are capable of, what they're about. And uh, maybe you learned a little bit of something from the video. Maybe you can uh, be better informed when you're thinking about buying one. Right. Okay. All right. Well, have a good one, people. Thanks for watching. And if I you can. enjoy this video, uh, let us know. We'll do more of them. Uh, we may attach uh, a few more of the Versus videos on. See how it goes. I can have. Have a good one.